Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and I'm here to walk you through my formula solution to a challenge on the Excel BI LinkedIn page. And if you don't follow the Excel BI LinkedIn page, I will advise you to. It definitely will help you step up your Excel formula game. Sometimes the questions are quite challenging. Take a look at some of the solutions provided. They may help you, you know, to have an idea and you will learn in the process. If you also have a solution, you do post it, but still take a look at other solutions. There's probably always a better solution than yours and you'll learn maybe a few tricks from them. Okay, so let's go into the problem description and then I'll walk you through my solution. It may be a long video because I would like to break down the fundamental, you know, building blocks that make the formula work. Some of these big, horrible, scary looking formulas, you know, the building blocks are really very simple. And once you understand the fundamentals, you can build up from them. Okay, so here's the question. You have um, a list of names and maybe the cities, let's just say where they are resident. And this is the expected output. So from this list, you want the unique list of cities, which here are four. Right, and underneath each of them, you want to have the names of the individuals maybe resident in those cities. So you can see New York here, you see James, you see Patricia, you see Linda, you know, and that's how it goes this way. Okay, so you also want it to be dynamic in a way that if this changes to like Lagos, okay, keep your eye here, you can see that Lagos gets added, right? And the name Jennifer also gets added. If you do control Z, you know, you are back to where you started off. Now you can see that this is a formula sitting in one cell and spills into you know multiple cells okay so back in the day you know we write the formula and we drag right drag down but you know with dynamic arrays and with the lambda functions it's become much easier to have the formula sit in one cell and you know create a two-dimensional array for you you know that um, is the solution to the problem and it's also very you know dynamic okay so let me just go to the solution tab and then you know start off from there when i see a problem like this which requires you know like i would say a spill two-dimensional spill multi-column multi-row there are two functions that come to mind the first one is make array the second one is the reduce function and both of them are lambda helper functions make array because very simply you know that's what it does if you have make array Take a look at this and this says rows you say four rows you say five columns okay you ask you for a function and you just need two variables that each of them would be like an iterator through the rows r then c will be an iterator through the columns then when i have r and c what do i want to see maybe just a calculation i may put something that looks like this r and underscore sorry the caps there. not that it will change much uh but i would just want to see it so that you can see what this is going to show you Okay, so I'm just saying that for every cell, show me the row and the column. Okay, but just put an underscore between them. All right, so let's do this and then close the bracket. So you see what happens? Because I said I wanted to see four rows and five columns. It's created, you know, an array for four rows and five columns. And you can see that for each of those cells, you know, what you see there is the row underscore the column. So what this means here is this is the third row and this is the fourth column. So make array delivers on this. So when I see this kind of problem, I think make array first of all, and I also think, you know, reduce. But let me show you, you know, the reduce and so that you kind of get the idea of why reduce works in this case. But I'm going to demonstrate just the reduce in this video. I can do the make array, but I would, I would go with reduce for this. So how does reduce work? Let's start with the scan function and then you see how it translates into reduce. So now look at these elements here. This is a good boy who is great. If you wanted to concatenate them, you know, straight up, like you wanted to have a final result. Of course, you can use, you know, maybe text join for this, right? To get it all at once. But now if you wanted to see it sequentially, meaning that here you want to see this, here you want to see this is, here you want to see this is a. Okay, you can use, you know, the scan function. The scan function will give you the result of all the intermediate calculations. So let me show you that quickly. Then you see where I'm headed. So scan, initial value, let's assume, you know, I just want to have nothing, which is just, you know, empty string. Okay, and then the array that is going to iterate through, I would say this is my array. So it means it's going to iterate through each of the elements in that array. Put a lambda function. 
okay and then i have two variables one is the accumulator which is like um you know the aggregator it starts off by taking the initial value then after that the next time it's coming through it takes the result of whatever calculation you perform right so now let's say i have the accumulator and i have the iterator those are the two variables i need the iterator would go through each of the elements the accumulator you know would be the result of the calculation and the next time it's coming through the accumulator will take on that value you see how it works okay so now accumulator iterator so what do i want to do here the accumulator will start off with this double code double code so let's assume i want to do accumulator and because i want to do something like this space is and iterator so now think about this the iterator is going to take individual elements of this array one after the other so this is what's going to happen the accumulator will start with nothing which is double quote double quote so the first answer we'll get is double quote double quote and a space and the iterator the iterator's first value is this so technically the first answer will be space this again i can make the formula really work but i'm just demonstrating here so space this right so once that's the result that will be the next value that the accumulator will take so the next value accumulator will take is space this now when it comes into the calculation now iterator would have moved from this to is so now you now see a case where you have space this space is now that will now become the new value of the accumulator and the iterator will then take a value of a so the next answer you see is space this space is space a anyway <laughs> you see it when it comes out so close this close this right so now you can see that that's kind of what we're trying to get at right so sequentially stacking them up now if you needed just the last value there which is really stacking everything fully you just change this can to a reduce so reduce is just like saying give me the final result of this sequential calculation okay and you can see that that is it so how does that come in into you know this solution here this is how what you are doing here is that you are doing a filter you know for maybe say new york and you get all the elements there you need to do this first you need to then stack it with what you are getting from los angeles stack it with houston stack it with chicago why and how do i use the reduce there okay so think about it if i have four you know elements there a b c d if i start up with the first one and i'm stacking them together the first time there's nothing to stack with a so it's just going to be a by the time i go to the next one i'm stacking a and b is a b next one i'm going to a b c next i'm going to a b c d okay so what do i need really i need the final result which is a b c d so it means that if i use a reduce function you know with some you know h stack in this case because i'm stacking them horizontally and I will be able to return the final output of the reduce function, which would obviously be, you know, the A, B, C, D. If you did the scan, it's more like saying you want to get individual elements. I want to get A alone. I want to get A and B stack, A, B, C stack. But you don't need all of that. You only need the last one. Okay? So that's why the reduce function, you know, can work in this case. So let's start up, you know, building the formula. That was quite, you know, a lengthy explanation, but very essential you know for those that uh, want to understand what's going on okay so now we kind of start off by doing two things you know i may just start with the let first and define a few variables so i start with let and i give a variable i want to just use maybe simple variables here so i would just use a i would make a this range so that i can always refer to it using a okay that's the first thing i put a comma all right and then i want to make b you know this range here all right okay so if i put my output as b now for example it means it's just going to give me all the cities all right makes sense let me expand my formula bar so we can really see what's going on there okay good okay so now i don't want b what's the first thing i need i probably need to get the unique list of cities first you know so that's the starting point because everything will be built off that. So how do I do that? I can call that, you know, C. And then I will say C is unique of what? Unique of all the cities. And the cities have already been defined to be B. So that is unique of B. So unique of B will give me, you know, all the cities. And I can say comma C, meaning that I want you to display C as the result. Okay. So that's the way the let function works. The variable, what it represents, the variable, what it represents, the variable, what it represents, and finally, what you want the let to speed out. 
okay so now you can see that those are the four cities right but now if you think about it do you really want it in this direction most likely not right so that's more like you are doing a transpose so you need to transpose it so it goes from left to right so some may use a transpose but you could also use two row which is saying that you know i want to take that array and i want to put it on one row make it a row vector okay so now we have the four cities okay so now that we have this we can now perform an operation on them what we want to do essentially is this for each of these elements as we you know more or less look through we take the element new york then we come here we filter it's more like you're doing a filter you filter on new york all the names that you have there you know you take them and you stack them under new york you then go to los angeles you do the same thing okay so it's more like you're iterating through these unique cities all right, so let's try and do that part. And that part requires us to use, you know, the reduce function. So let's assume I'm not spitting out C again. What I want to do is I want to just spit out, you know, the, the reduce um, result. So I'll start with reduce and say my initial value is going to be, you know, nothing. And then the array. So the array here now are those individual elements, which are these cities, right? And they have already been given the variable C. So it means that I am iterating through C, okay? And then now I go into, you know, the lambda portion. So the lambda portion has, you know, two variables, like you already saw. You have maybe the accumulator and you have the iterator. I may just use these two variables. I typically just use A, B, or P, C, or D, E, but just to make it a little clearer, okay? So these are the two variables. Now, what do you want to do? You want to stack them up, right? So you would have, definitely, you have, you know, an H stack there, okay? So you have an H stack, okay? And the first thing you would have is the accumulator. In this case, of course, the accumulator will first of all start with nothing, right? Okay, so and what are you stacking the accumulator with? You're stacking it with the result of the filter. So what I mean is that I will filter based on New York. I will get all those names. That's one array. Then when I filter with Los Angeles and I get those names, I will stack them up horizontally. So now the accumulator, you know, will keep having all these values. If you remember my ABCD description. So now I have the accumulator. What is it going to be stacked up with? It's going to be stacked up with a filter, right? What are we filtering? We are filtering to return, you know, the names, okay? So uh, what are we defined the names as? The names are defined as A. So the variable A is what we want as the result of the filter. But now we need to put, you know, the include criteria for the filter, meaning what determines what is filtered out and what is not filtered out. So what do we need to see? We are testing where the city will be equal to whatever city we are currently iterating through. So the list of all the cities is B, which is B2 to B20. So that's B. We are testing where B is equal to what now? So now this is the tricky part. Just note that the iterator always starts off, you know, with the first value in this array. So the array C here is your list of cities, which are what you see here. New York, Los Angeles, Houston, Chicago. So it means that the iterator will start up with New York. When it's done, you know, it will then take on the value of Los Angeles, it take on the value of Houston, take on the value of Chicago. That's how it will work. So what we are testing here is where B, which is the list of cities, is equals to the iterator. The iterator will pick its values from C, where C is a unique list of cities. Okay, so this is going to be it. It's going to just do this for all the elements there and it's going to stack them up together horizontally. That's really what you want to do. So close the bracket here, close the bracket on the H stack close the bracket on the lambda, close on the reduce, close on the let, and then you enter. Okay, so now you can see that, maybe I just take out the bold, so it's, uh, you know, looks, yeah, so it's looking like it's taking shape gradually as if we've been able to spill the array to have multiple rows, multiple columns, so that's good. So now the first thing you see is that the first column is definitely not necessary, right? You know, because first of all i started with you know a double code double code so it kind of feels like this which is the problem you would see if you start up with nothing and you have this element a let's say b c d but because this is the first value in this uh cell here first you have a result of more or less like nothing then here you now have nothing plus you know you now have nothing 
plus A, you have nothing plus A plus B, nothing plus A plus B plus C. So the point is that you have one redundant either row or column, depending on how the array is. So in this case, we have that, which is this first column, right? So what we can do here is we need to drop that column, meaning that we don't need that column. So we can use a drop and say we want to drop, which is like remove, we want to remove not a row, but a column, okay? So we need to know where we need to put the drop. So we are still in the H stack here, Lambda, okay? So here we are in the drop. So we put a comma, we skip the rows, we put a comma, we want to drop one column, and then we need to close one more bracket. Okay? So now after doing that, you can see that we have something that looks, you know, reasonable, right? But the only thing here is that depending on the size of the array, when there are not enough elements to fill, you know, the array, it's giving us some hash NE. We can fix that just using an if error, right? So you put an if error, and then you say that if it is an error, you know, you want to put double quote, double quote. Okay, you close bracket again, right? So now you can see that we have something that makes sense. The only thing we are missing here at this point is that we don't have the cities, you know, above the names, okay? But the cities are already stored in a variable, which are in variable C. So what we can do is that we can now do a vertical stack, which is saying take those um, elements in C and stack them up on top of this vertically now. So we are not using an H stack, but we are using a V stack, okay? So you can see here, I'll put a V stack. Now those um, cities are already stored in variable C. So it's like saying stack C up with every other thing you are seeing here, which are the names there, okay? Right, so now you close the let and you have the result, okay? So we can change this from Houston to Lagos, right? Okay, and you can see that the moment you do that, you can see Lagos and Jennifer. And you go back and you're back here. So it's quite an interesting solution, you know, but it's easily understood when you understand the individual functions that were used. I think the only tricky one there is the reduce. You know, um, it takes a while to get a hang of it, but once you do, it kind of starts to make sense, you know, and kind of have solved a couple of questions, you know, using the reduce function. So yeah, it's now a lot more clearer, you know, in my mind. So that's just how, you know, it works. So if you have a situation where you want to stack things up horizontally, vertically, you can use reduce and any of the stacking functions because the reduce will just give you the last element, which obviously is when all those individual elements are stacked, you know, together. So I hope, um, you know, this was maybe easy to follow one thing i like about the dynamic arrays and building things sequentially is the fact that it spills the results you know into the worksheet and you can see it so at every stage when i see the result i know where i'm headed because just in my head building this function i won't know to use a drop i won't know to use you know um, an if error but at every stage i spill the result out when i see the results i know where i'm headed my destination and my current location and i know what to do if i don't need that column i drop it if I need to turn hash n is into double quote, double quote empty string, I use an if error. You know, if I need to stack something, I bring one of the stacks. So it's easy because the results are out there, you know, as in, and they are spilled. Back when we used to do control shift enter, it was much difficult because, you know, you really couldn't see it. You have to maybe use an F9 to evaluate within, you know, just the formula bar of the cell. But this is really good. I think it does help, you know, us see where we are and how to get to where we need to get. So I have spoken a lot in this video, but um, not just because I wanted to talk, but just to really explain some of these things. It's not for you to cram the solution, but just understand the thought and be able to follow it. So I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you like the video, hit the like button and you can subscribe to the channel Excel Moments for now. Um, ah,